Alright, hello, welcome back to Outmouse Studios. My name is Penny, and I'm glad you're here. This is going to be a quick one. We're going to be looking at RPG Maker MZ today, and we're going to be building a success-based dice rolling system for doing things like having skill checks in your games. Now, success-based systems originally come from table topping and are most famously associated with things like Burning Wheel and World of Darkness. Alright, let's get into it. We're actually going to be starting with a demo today because I think it would be hard to explain what we're talking about. So let's go ahead and play that demo. Okay. So, first thing, we are going to have our system give us a rank 3 in Larceny and a rank 5 in Survival. Now, certain skills, actually, he says it, sometimes you can try a skill over and over and, and other times just once. So fishing, you can do as much as you like. So use survival to fish. So we rolled a 4, we rolled a 1, we rolled a 4, we rolled a 1, and we rolled a 5. A 5 is a success, so we got one success. We caught one fish. We go check our items, we have one fish. We can choose to fish again if we'd like. We'll try one more time. So 2, a 2, a 6, that's a success, a 2, and a 6. So two successes. Success is 2, you caught two fish. And we now have three fish. Now, other times you can only try once. So this door has a lock. We're going to try our larceny. We rolled a one, a one, and a one. No successes. You failed to pick the lock. I guess you'll have to find a key. If we try again, you failed to pick this lock already. You will have to find a key. And then, of course, we can always get an item, like a skeleton key. And the door opens. All right, so that's what we're trying to accomplish. How do we do it? All right, so this is a combination of a few things. Our initiation is really simple. We're setting our variables to larceny to three and survival to five. What I've done to set these variables up is I've created all the skills I'm gonna have, athletics, larceny, survival, medicine, occult, insight, persuasion, and subterfuge. I have a success counter, I have a dice roller, and I have a dice pool. This is how many dice get rolled for a certain roll. All right. So we set our skills to three and five. All right, on the door, we have it set our dice pool equal to our larceny. Then we have it run our common event. If there's at least one success, the door opens. Else you failed, and we turn on a control switch. Our control switch just says you've already failed it, you can't try again. And then our third one is set to having the skeleton key opens the door. I'll go ahead and go back to each of those. So you can pause it on your screen and copy it if you'd like. There we go. On the fishing, we have use survival to fish, a choice, once again, we set our dice pool to survival this time, and we run our common event. If the success is greater than one, you you know show the exclamation point, you get a fish equal to the number of successes, and you tell the player how many six fish they found. Otherwise, you didn't catch any. Since there's no additional page, you can just try this over and over again. Now, you might want to try that to, say, having bait or something. That's up to you. This is very extendable. You could also set it to have a certain number of chances before it flips over. Okay, let's go take a look at that common event. All right, so our common event starts out with setting our successes to zero, uh, just to get it back to zero, then starts a loop. If the dice pool is greater than zero, we're gonna roll our dice, and that'll be a random dot number between one and six. For testing purposes, we're showing what that number is. And then if it is greater than 5, so a 5 or 6, it's a success, we uh, increment our success by 1. Once there is once dice pool is 0 or lower, we're going to break the loop. And set our dice pool uh, minus equal 1. So once it's 0 or lower, we're going to go to break the loop and every iteration we are going to reduce the dice pool by one otherwise you'd end up with an infinite loop sorry about that okay and then again for testing purposes we're showing the number of successes i'm going to go ahead and remove these now because now you know how that works it doesn't need to be there we'll hit apply i'm going to wait for a second for you to take a look 
and we're going to run it one more time without the, the messages to show that it's not really a slow process if you don't have it tell you every time what's going on. All right, we've got our skills. We go and we fish. We say yes, you caught one fish. We say yes, you didn't catch anything. Better luck next time. But this way, you have a skill check behind the scenes. It isn't totally random, um, and it isn't completely static either. And then you could do things like on level up, allow them to pick a skill to upgrade. Or they could pay gold to have a trainer upgrade their skill. Um, or you could have skills as treasure, where if you do a side quest, then someone teaches you how to, you know, fish better. Well, use survival better. And survival could be used for fishing. It could also be used for hunting or gathering. Um, you could use larceny for picking locks or pickpocketing people. It really opens a lot, a, up a lot of opportunities. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful and interesting. Obviously, you could do this maybe easier if you were to use a, a D20 style system where you're just adding things together. But if you like success-based systems, this is how you do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please consider a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.